All right, this is a model of the heart. And you can appreciate how the heart is divided into four chambers. We have the right atrium, the left atrium, the left ventricle, and the right ventricle. So we can kind of open it up a little bit like this. Actually, let's begin, however, by closing the heart up. You can appreciate how the right ventricle is blue in this particular model to indicate that it's deoxygenated blood that's traveling to the right side of the heart. Um, the left side of the heart, however, gets, deox gets oxygenated blood. And why this is orange, we'll never know. But nonetheless, it is oxygenated blood um, as opposed to blue, right? Okay, good. All right, well, let's take a look first at maybe a few grooves that we have around the heart. In the, pr in the area of the cardiac skeleton is a groove between the atria and the ventricles. And this is referred to as the atrial ventricular groove. There's also a groove in the region where the wall between the two ventricles lies. You can appreciate that this is a wall between the two ventricles. We call this the interventricular septum. And likewise, where the septum exists, we have a groove that these blood vessels rest in and therefore this is the interventricular sept uh, septum with the interventricular groove. So the groove is the interventricular groove. All right, well, let's take a look at some blood vessels. So I'm gonna begin by taking this heart model off. Let's look at the big blood vessel first. This great big one is the aorta. This is essentially sending uh, oxygenated blood throughout the body. And of course, it's arising from the left ventricle. Um, this large vessel in front of it is also an artery, believe it or not, in spite of the fact that it is blue. And this is referred to as the pulmonary trunk. The pulmonary trunk is going to be branching into two pulmonary arteries, a left pulmonary artery and a right pulmonary artery. Now notice that these pulmonary arteries are blue, right? in color, which means that they are transporting deoxygenated blood. But they are arteries by definition, because arteries send blood away from the heart. So both the aorta and the pulmonary trunk are arteries. Likewise, veins send blood to the heart. Here's a very large vein and another very large vein. And these two collectively are called the vena cava. This would be the superior vena cava this is the inferior vena cava. Again, blood is brought to the heart via veins. Now, blood is coming from the lungs to the heart on the left side. So we also have veins on the left side, but these veins are red because the blood coming from the lungs is oxygenated blood. And so these would be the pulmonary veins. So there's two here on the left side draining into the left atrium. And there's two on the right side also draining into the left atrium. Okay, good. Well, let's talk about the blood that, uh, vessels that feed the heart itself, feed blood to the heart itself and drain the heart. Let's begin by looking at two that are associated directly with the aorta. So coming off the aorta is this one on the right side, simply called the right coronary artery. And then there's a little stubby one on the left side called the left coronary artery. The left coronary artery is going to branch into two arteries. This one going around the heart is the circumflex artery. Again, that's the red vessel. And the one going down here in this interventricular groove, the red one, is the anterior uh, interventricular artery. Um, if we take a look down here, this right coronary artery persists all the way down and we have an artery that kind of goes off the side of the heart here. We're not going to be bothered with these others, who knows what they're supposed to be, but this particular one is the marginal artery. So this particular artery at the base here is the marginal artery, really not the base of the heart. This is going more toward the apex, the point of the heart, but I'm just referring to the series of arteries that would be at the base of them, right? And so um, this again is the marginal artery. All right, now let's take a look at the veins and probably the best way to look at the veins that essentially uh, take blood from the heart muscle be at the back of the heart. 
You have a very large vein here, and actually if we follow that all the way from the front, let's do that first. So this is a very large vein, travels from here all the way around, following the circumflex artery, all the way around to essentially draining in this big bulge. And this large vein is called the great cardiac vein. Likewise, there's one that follows the back of the heart in the interventricular septum at the ba back of the heart. And so this is going to be referred to as the middle cardiac vein. And then there's the small cardiac vein. All three of them drain into this large bulge, which we refer to as the coronary sinus. The coronary sinus. Now the coronary sinus drains deoxygenated blood back into the left, or I should say the right side of the heart, and it goes here, right there, into the opening of the coronary sinus as it's draining into then the right atrium. Okay, good. Notice too that the great, the small, and the middle cardiac veins seem to form sign of kind of a fancy T. Can you see the T? And of course, all of them are going to have a, a convergence here, uh, right there at the coronary sinus. Good. All right, now as there is an anterior interventricular artery in the interventricular sulcus, there's also a posterior uh, interventricular artery right here. And of course, it's going to be joining with the circumflex artery. And uh, this, of course, is the right coronary artery here coming around the back. All right, good. Well, let's take a look now at some valves.